On behalf of Rock My Monkey TV and Tatars, based out of Olympia, Washington, I'm here with the two boys from fucking Thrown Into Exile. Two, of, two, not the only two, but you know, pretty damn important group of the band here. Fellas, introduce yourself. I'm Mario. I play guitar. My name's Evan. I sing. Right on, man. So first off, tell me how Mayhem's treating you guys. Mayhem's treating us amazingly well. The staff, catering. I mean, huge thanks to the you know people at Rockstar. John Reese and his cam, the Musicians Institute for putting this together. Thank you, Jose. Everyone has been so amazingly good. It's 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 beyond words to explain how good they are. Not, not only not only the staff at Mayhem um, and the fans at every show, but all these other bands that we're on this tour with have been so cool to us. You know, because we're, we're we're very new to the scene, and all these guys have been touring for years. Um, so they've been treating us with a lot of respect, and we really appreciate that. That's killer, man. Because I was just about ready to ask about the camaraderie, about you know how the other bands have been treating you, how they've been rad. Everybody's been super cool. You know, Frankie from in New York saying what's up every day, Chris from Motionless and White, you know, the guys from Five Finger, um, you, I mean, the list goes on, everybody's been super cool with us, you know, Job for a Cowboy and, you know, Born of Osiris guys are really nice dudes. Sorry about that. That's real cool, man. So, uh, wow. oh <laughs> fumbling. So anyway, uh, tell me about the tour, how, how it differs doing this live festival scene. I mean, you guys are starting at 1 in the afternoon comparing to, you know, maybe like a later 8 or 9.30 set, you know, yeah. So how is that different switching into that schedule and, and playing outdoors on a summer festival compared to like indoor clubs? It's difficult. It's brand new to us, you know. Um, you know, it's just one of those things that it, it's, it's it's kind of cool going into it because we, you know, we have, we think we're playing like 20 minute sets every day, so it's not as, you know, it's not like playing a half hour, 45 minute set, you know, like we're, where we're from in the LA, um, you know, and we're getting up, you know, we're, you know, we're, we're getting up every morning at like eight, in the, eight o'clock in the morning, and you know, sound checking by, you know, 10:30, 11 o'clock, and we're hitting the stage by, you know, 12:30, 1 o'clock, and. Yeah, it's 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 it can be it's it's telling, but you know I'm doing whatever I can to to make sure that my voice is ready to go. You know, like I'm not out there partying like an animal. You know, um, this may this may be our first tour. You know, the nationwide North American tour, but I'm definitely not new to the game. You know. Believe me, when he says he is not partying, this man is in bed by 10, 11 o'clock, drinking his high, his hot green tea and he, he's obviously I mean meanwhile I'm on in the other bunk answering emails and getting stuff happening <laughs> but no I mean we we like to make sure we run a tight ship in the sense that we we totally understand the responsibilities right. in the morning because I mean we're not only performing but we're also working the musicians Institute tent yeah. so I mean as soon as we're done I mean hence we mentioned we're yeah. up at 8 a.m loading all this stuff back and forth but you know we couldn't be any happier to be here though yeah, there's such a thing as groupies we don't we we don't know that we don't know what that is we, we haven't seen any yet did you forget you're in metal <laughs> true true definitely in metals but uh yeah we're just you know we're, we're working from uh, sun up to sundown so now we know you're out there man you're all beautiful so anyway <laughs> so uh tell me about the gear you're using on this tour i'm a guitar player myself oh nice so. um thankfully the awesome people at jackson mr tempesta um, got me taken care of. I signed with them back in November. I'm currently playing a R R24. It's in a white finish with a black bevel outlining. Just one single pickup. It's very similar to Alexi's. Nice. Mine is the, yeah, yeah. the ESP headstock. Um, I got this new brand of um, the Pro Series, which is Jackson having. It's a matte black finish with matte black hardware. 22 fretter things bitching, all their body finish, yeah. you know, obviously um, 8185 on the neck. Yeah. And then um, they just sent me out a um, Phil Demo signature model, the P, uh, Demolition. Yeah. Looks killer. I mean, it's got that nasty blood yeah. red finish. It's just, it's, it, it, it looks vicious. Right on, man. Yeah. Um, as far as that, you know, amps, I'm playing a PV Triple um, X2. Okay. Uh, wireless system, Line 6, strings, Dunlop, you know, picks as well. I mean, that's pretty much like my whole rundown. I'm very minimal when it comes to my uh, rig, you know. Yeah. I don't like to do, you know, like do the river dance or tap dance right. on stage with so many pedals. Like, I like to rely on my amp's natural tone, oh, yeah. you know. And the only thing that's in there is an ISP decimator, just to make sure I don't get a lot of, yeah, a lot of 
you know. <laughs> and that's killer, man. I'm all about the, you know, fucking plug straight into the head. Minimal, minimal on the floor, man. No smoke and mirrors, BS. Just go for it. Hit it hard. Well, not only that, but it's just like, you know, sometimes it, it, I, I feel bad when you see guys trying to achieve other dudes' tones. And they're like, if you get my signature head, you're going to get my tone. Yeah, and they're like, dude, so I'm oh like, dude, if only they were watching you yeah. from the side of the stage and they realized the yeah. little, little board you got going oh, on yeah. there. They're not. <laughs> Exactly. You know, so sorry about that little guitar nerd out there. <laughs> Tell me about your vocal pipes. Uh, PV Electronics in Hollywood uh, was nice enough to hook me up with a wireless mic system That's for this killer. tour. Um, bunch of really killer guys over there, and I, I love the mic itself. Great products. Right. So you're a musician, musicians institute grad, right. right? So what about you? What have you had schooling or any formal training on your vocal technique and? Um, you know, I, you know, I moved out here. I moved out to Los Angeles, I should say, not Washington. Los Angeles from Cleveland, Ohio, in 2003. Um, I took lessons from uh, at the Orange County Music Academy from an opera teacher for well over a year, um, which is well outside of my realm of you know what Throne in Exile is. But I thought it was the greatest way to learn exactly what I could do with my voice and stuff. You know. Um, and it, you know, it definitely took a while to get to where I am now. I definitely probably wouldn't be able to perform today, um, you know, eight years ago. You know, it took a while to get to this point. But, you know, just um, working with, you know, working also with uh, Melissa Cross, uh, great, great vocal coach. Um, and she was definitely more the rock metal vocalist, you know, taught me the things that the opera teacher couldn't taught me, teach me, you know, but, you know, doing whatever I can to make sure that I'm in the best shape that possible to do this, you know. Man, and that's, that's a responsible singer, so everybody listen up. Now, tell me about Musicians Institute, like, what a young guitar player could learn that maybe he couldn't just pick up himself by studying the grades, you know? In all reality, what MI teaches you, not only would it teach you discipline, you know, theory, ear training, all the all the stuff, you know, that you're going to want to learn when you get thrown onto the real world, but also being able to identify yourself as a musician, well, as a guitar player, like who you are and what you want to pursue. And the, the beautiful thing about MI is like, you know, we're in the heart of California. It's like riding on Hollywood and Highland and it's like, you know, the sunset strips just down the street, like t the chances are endless. And if you want something bad enough and you got the chops, yeah. It's, you know, sky's the limit, yeah. not even the sky, because it's beyond that. It's, it's just based on how bad you want it. You got all, all that aligned together, yeah. you're set to go. How much you're willing to work for, really. Yeah. Exactly. You know? Whatever you put into it, that's what you're going to get out, you know. Um, so we, we, we just keep going, keep going. Always setting ourselves up for goals, next step, next step, yeah. you know. Realistic goals, you know. I mean, that's what's been with, you know, even with throwing the eggs, I'll applying that stuff. Like, we've always been very realistic of what we want to accomplish and, you know, again, real with ourselves of what what's achievable, what's not achievable. And, you know, for if I were to tell any other aspiring musician that wants to pursue this, ultimately it starts with you and your bandmates, and you have to ask yourself that question and be very real of how bad you want this and how much you're willing to go through to make it happen. Are you willing to lose money? Are you willing to lose hours of sleep? Are you willing to lose, you know, family time, friend time, all that stuff? Because you're, it's like playing cards, like Blasco told me once, you're either all in or you're not. And, you know. That's like the best thing I could tell anyone is just pursue this and just make sure it comes straight from the heart, that it's right. organic, that yeah. you, you're not, you're not trying to bullshit anyone, you're doing it because you want to do don't it. Don't play anything you don't feel. Exactly. Yeah. Don't do it for the wrong reasons, you know. Absolutely. If you're going to do music, you know what the right reasons are, so stay true to it. You know? it's, it's the feeling, man, that you get from being on the stage or creating, yeah. creating a composition that's just you know, it hits you like no other. I mean, I, I'm sure you guys feel this way, but after my band comes up with stuff, you know, we'll be sitting around going, fucking hey, dude, I would listen to this, man. I want to keep listening Definitely to this. You got to ask yourself that question when, yeah. you, when you're doing that, for sure. Yeah. Not only that, but also ask yourself as well, like, am I going to be happy with this tune 15 years from now? Right. You know, or not six down the line, six months down along the line, you're like, man, I wish we would have changed that on the mix. Right. Yeah, that's kind of too late. Yeah. <laughs> so... It's just all about get it right from the get-go or try your hardest to get it first and foremost rather than live that riddle or regret kind of do. Yeah, you definitely you, you want to get, you know, get try to get it right the first time, you know. Um, but sometimes it's just going to take a little bit to, you know, maybe step away from it, come back to it the next day, you know, have play it for multiple people, see how they feel about it and stuff like that. And then, you know, you end up get you end up getting it right, you know. Um, like I've, I've told people before, don't rush to get your music up on YouTube or, you know, up on, you know, iTunes or anything because, you know, you may find out 6 months from then that you're not really into what you put up there yeah. and you 
then it's like, oh shit, you know what? It's too late. It's up there for the rest for the rest of eternity, you know. So, you know, might as well just wait a few more months and and, and make make sure everything's tight, you know. Yeah, and what people may be hugely surprised about if they don't know you guys' history is you are in an unsigned band out here on Mayhem Fest. Right. I mean, I was doing my research on we technically are the first unsigned band to be on the whole tour. Cool. And, you know, it's it's an amazing feeling. Not only that, we don't have a booking agent. Like we don't, we're going about this in the very punk rock D, D DIY mentality. Man, this isn't the first time this has popped up today, but I preach it. It's all about the underground, dude. It's all about that underground fucking punk scene because it's gonna resurface. You know, not that you guys are a punk scene, but it's that mentality of like, dude, we're all for ourselves. Let's fucking do it right here. You know, no bullshit, straight to the punch. And I think that is fucking incredible and hugely inspiring, man. I mean, it means a lot, I think. I mean, the whole thing is like, look, we're not here to wait on anyone to come at us with a silver platter. We don't want that. We want to work for it. We want to earn it. We want to do things the right way. And if it means us having to do things on our own, then so be it. Because we don't want to wait. We just want to go out there and do it. At the end of the day, I mean, if you go about it the way that we're talking about, at the end of the day, you can put your head on your pillow and feel good about it because you know that you did it the right way you know well what what immediate steps did you guys have to make to get onto mayhem i mean to to be that unsigned band that's like you know what we're not going with the label a label's not buying us on this tour we're doing our uh, doing it ourselves i mean was that well the first step was i mean last last year last mayhem uh, Headbang for the Highway had teamed up with Sumerian Records, and in every city that Mayhem was touching, they did a battle of bands. You got to play, you know, the Sumerian stage. Well, we did that in Los Angeles, and we beat out about a dozen other bands at the Key Club, and so we got to open up the Sumerian stage. This year, on the other hand, um, I'll let Mario take it from here. Um, the Musicians Institute has always been a partner with Mayhem Fest throughout the years, you know, like being part of like, like a, a smaller team. But this year, the conversation came about, like, you know what? How does MI sponsoring a stage sound? And then, you know, the vice president of the school, Jose Farrell, is a huge metalhead. Nice. Loves us, um, loves metal. I mean, grew up on metal. But the thing about MI is there's a lot of metal kits on that campus. Yeah. Like, you would be surprised the amount of Slayer, Metallica, Meshuga, Periphery, yeah. Slipknot, Anthrax shirts you'll find on campus because yeah. it's like it's there. Yeah. And, you know, that's what the school is following when you had like guys like Paul Gilbert going to the school, Jack Gibson of Exodus, I mean, you know, Sinister Gates of Events Sevenfold went there. John Five is a huge advocate of the school. He like he didn't attend there, but he right. promotes the school. Yeah, so I mean, before we left the tour two weeks ago, I had him in there like shredding up. Meanwhile, I'm like right there with my jaw on the floor, I'm like oh my god, watching this man play. But so this whole thing came about, multiple meetings, you know, and then both Mayhem staffing and MI staff were like, why not throw an X out? Be the key opening band to the tour since I took the music business program in 2009 and my drummer graduated from the drum program 2006 and I mean prior after that you know Evan you know us doing Mayhem Fest last year after that we got him on the cover belly weekly after that we went out to open for Morbid Angel and Dark Funeral we did the California Metal Fest with Kill Switch Engage then we started the year off with Testament and Overkill so then we started getting very heavy airplay on Sirius XM you know with Jose Mangan and all these factors came in together like you know what this band is doing. This, this is what it's about. They're like all these elements came together. Like you know, this could make sense because it wouldn't seem like, you know, all the, the guys all you know the hang out on metal sucks, yeah. blabber mouth like to trash on because it'd be like, yeah. if you look if you do your search, you're like okay, yeah. it makes somewhat kind of sense. Right. But on that end, everyone was extremely happy and we got at it. I mean, when we got the offer. You know, all of us are like freaking out of yeah, excitement, and we said yes, right. absolutely. You know, we would love to, yeah. in exchange for us to work the tent. Right. You know, which is like absolutely. Yeah. You know, by. Yeah, so it's a little more work for us um, right. coming out. You know, I mean, waking up at 8 a.m., setting up, you know, unloading the truck, yeah. setting up the MI tent, getting it ready, going over, getting our, you know, gear on stage, sound checking after stage, coming back to the MI tent, doing our signing, um, and then you know, working, you know, working the tent, talking about MI, um, having other bands, you know, Attica Seven, Born of Osiris, uh, Motionless and White. Um, and, all coming over to do signings as well and just you know helping them out and helping that out as well so it's it's cool it's a fair trade for us you know yeah, and man. we are glad to do it that is way killer guys man. so have you been able to catch some bands on this tour you know i mean you guys are getting up at eight you're working this pretty much all day you got press 
is there time for you guys to go catch out, you know? I mean, the one band we've both been so stoked on trying to see has been Amon Amar, but by the time we're done breaking down, they're done. You know, we've catched our friends in Butcher Babies, you know, like right. here's the thing about them, like actually, um, we're both LA bands, so yeah. as both bands were growing together, we played a huge amount of shows together. Killing, so like one night it was us, them, otherwise it was on Century Media, um, Butcher Babies, Valor and Vengeance. Yeah. Gemini nice Syndrome. Gemini oh, nice Syndrome, that's on Sony Records. Right. We all played one show together and we maxed out the Gemini Roxy thing. Warner Brothers, by the way. Warner Brothers. Brothers. Yeah. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, Warner Brothers. <laughs> but, you know, that night we had we had over 730 something people that are like over capacity at the Roxy. That's killer, man. You know, and it's, ama it's amazing to see that all those five bands after that show where we all went, you know, progressed to. Yeah. So your babies are just out here killing it every day. You know, they're getting their album coming out here in about a week, and you know the songs are the, the songs are there. They're solid, you know. And as far as like the Jaeger and MI stage, um, certain venues, uh, you know, where in, in, in location um, to where our tent is, we, we actually have a really good view of both of the stages. Um, as far as the main stage is concerned, around that time the main stage starts, we're loading up the truck. Right. Uh, so hope you know. I mean, the first couple nights we were able to actually catch you know all the five finger set and zombies set and you know both of those just amazing live performances really killer I mean it's you know you guys are out here living it dude you know and it's still a learning experience for you guys exactly I mean every day I wake up in the morning I just real you know it's a little reminder how lucky and bl truly blessed we are to be here you know and we never forget that and we're you know we're very appreciative of everything because this is all luxuries right. it could be gone tomorrow but we know that we value that I mean we value Everyone that comes out early, we value people like you that want to interview us and help us out because, right. you know, for us to come out like this, it's a huge thing because, this, again, this is our first tour ever. Yeah, and that is killer, man. So I've been ending almost every interview on this note. It's kind of a curveball, and it's, uh, it's basically if I came into this interview and I didn't know a thing about you guys, I wasn't even a metalhead, you know, I listened to music. Mm -hmm. What do I need to know about you guys? What what should I know just about about thrown into exile? Um, we're you know we're we're an up and coming um, exciting metal band that if you that if you dig you know metal and um, you're you're gonna enjoy it. Straight in your face, aggressive and fucking metal. Absolutely, and I'll vouch for it, man. I caught part of your guys' set before I had to come back oh, here. Yeah. Fucking high energy, man. I was like, I was walking in, it showed up a little late, and I was like, damn, what is that? Sounds good. Thanks. Fucking, yeah, man. So you guys kill it and keep killing it and have safe travels on the road, guys. Okay.